it says tips for tri-tip. So my local places don't really have much tri-tip. So I've only cooked it, I think, twice. Um, so I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have many good uh, tips for tri-tip. Um, I know a lot of people love it. And um, my understanding is you want to cook it to a steak-like temperature. So, you know, 130, if you like medium rare in that range. Um, and it's fine when it's heated through for, you know, two or three hours, but I know some people like to cook it a little bit longer to tenderize it. So if the tri-tip that you're getting seems a little bit tough after um, two or three hours, then I recommend trying, you know, six to eight or 12 hours to tenderize it some. If it's already tender at, you know, three to four hours, then that should be your cutoff and you shouldn't uh, really do it uh, too much longer than that. So it's not too helpful with tri-tip. Um, I do a lot of, uh, Chuck steak and strip steak are the, the two that I turn to a lot, but it's, um, um, those are my two tips. Mike says he has uh, uh, tried to have one of his favorite cooks. He does 134 for 12 hours and it comes out great. So it's kind of in line with what I, I thought would work, but it's definitely one of those, it reminds me of a, a strip steak or a sirloin that you can heat it through and it will be really good. And depending on the quality of meat that you're getting, um, heating it through might be all you need. If you have a, a prime strip steak, that can be really good just as it is. But if you have a choice or select strip steak, then cooking it, you know, just heated through, it's still going to be pretty tough and not that, not that tender. But if you let it go for eight or 10 or 12 hours, it really tenderizes it and turns it into a, a lot more appealing piece of meat. A lot of people, um, you know, ask questions about, you know, what should I cook a sirloin steak at? And, we give a lot of answers in this group right away, but there's a lot of variability that goes into it, you know, especially the grade of the steak, that if it's a prime steak, you don't have to cook it quite as long because it's already going to be more tender, more flavorful, because it has more marbling in it. And so what works for you might not work for someone else just based on saying sirloin steak, because it might be very different grades. And we also have an international audience, you know, in this group. I've talked to people that when they cook, um, I think it was their ribeye, when they cooked it for uh, 12 hours, it's too tough because of the way that their cows are raised and how much, I think how much exercise and um, energy they expend um, grazing and everything, that their meat was really hard and really tough. So they had to go through and cook it for 24 hours to tenderize it enough for it to be enjoyable, where for us, we would just heat it through in America. So there's a lot of variability. Um, so I recommend in general, when you're trying to figure out time and temperatures, look at what works for you and try to continually get meat from the same place. And you'll learn how to cook that type of meat. Um, it makes it a lot easier than just kind of picking and choosing what different people want. You know, when it comes to time and temperature, the biggest uh, things to remember are the temperature is the doneness that there's two main ones. There's steak-like and braised-like. Steak-like is generally anything at 145 or below. So if you wanted to come out tasting like a steak, pick the, the temperature that you like between, you know, 120 for really rare up to 145 for uh, pretty much well done. And uh, just pick your steak-like temperature. And then um, if you want it to be braised-like, I generally go either 156 for starts to fall apart and you're starting to get the, everything breaking down. Um, 165, which is a good, things are really starting to break down and you can start to shred stuff. And 176 is really fall apart, you know, fall off the bone tender, more like a traditional pot roast. Um, I pick one of those for braised like, and um, that's where the temperature comes in. So a lot of people will, you know, say, how do I cook a chuck roast? And they'll get, you know, 130 for, you know, 36 hours, they'll get you know, 176 for 12 hours, and they'll say, well, um, I'll average it out. And they cook it at, you know, 140 for 30 hours, and they really don't like the results. And that's because people are giving them different, um, different suggestions based on what they might want. So the temperature, figure out the doneness of what you want. If you want medium rare, or if you want a pot roast, you're going to want very different temperatures. And then um, for timing, I recommend all the timing does is um, tenderize it. The longer it's in, the more it tenderizes. 
So something that's tender already, like a filet, you only have to heat it through. For something like a chuck roast or short ribs, you have to go a long time. Um, I have time and temperatures for all different cuts, so I recommend mine because I think they're pretty good. But uh, Chef Steps has some, Serious Eats has some, there's a few you know, good recommendations out there that I, I respect as well. And you know, find the temperature you want, then look at what time they recommend, and you should end up with uh, something that you like.